Hello everyone. So today we are here to understand a new type of scheduling algorithm in operating system that is the priority scheduling. Now just recapitulating what we have done in our previous classes, we have seen the SJF or shortest job first scheduling algorithm. We have seen that this SJF is either preemptive or non preemptive in nature. When SJF is non preemptive in nature that means when a new process starts it will come out from the uh, CPU when it completes its execution and how a new process is selected the process which is having shortest burst time that is only selected. It will be sent to the CPU executes there completes its execution then comes out. After that the next process which is having the shortest burst time that process will be selected that is about the non preemptive SJF. In case of preemptive SJF scheduling algorithm when one process is uh, coming inside the CPU the process which is having shortest burst time after some time period if a new process comes with lesser burst time then the previous process is stopped and the new process is going inside the CPU for its execution. So that is the preemptive type of scheduling is a uh, shortest of scheduling algorithm. In case of preemptive SJF or preemptive shortest job scheduling algorithm say from the ready queue the shortest job is selected and is sent to the CPU for execution. While it is executing a new process arrives in the ready queue with shorter burst time. Then what happens the process which was running inside the CPU is preempted because a new process is arrived with lesser burst time and the operating system is allocating that newly arrived process with smaller burst time inside the CPU for execution. So this is the kind of preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm. That means here we are giving the priority on the process which is having shorter burst time. That is why sometimes the preemptive SJF is also called SRTF or shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm. Today we will see a new type of scheduling algorithm which is the priority scheduling. In case of priority scheduling a number is assigned to each and every process which indicates its priority level. So a process which is having maximum priority will get a number and the process which is not having that much priority will also get a number and the processes are selected as per their priority number lower the number higher is the priority. So if a process arrives with the maximum priority we will see that the assigned priority number is the smallest one and the process which is not having much importance will have the priority number which is a bigger number. Like if uh, some interactive uh, student processes are delivered to the system and some system processes are running, uh, running in the process. So definitely the system processes are having higher priority. So their priority number is lesser. If a new process arrives, here comes the concept. When a process is running at that time a new process arrives which is having a high priority than the currently running process then the currently running process is preempted. That means say a process is running inside the CPU with priority number say 5. Now a new process arrived with the priority number 2. So 2 is less than 5 that means the process which is having lesser priority number is of greater importance. So what we will do actually the operating system preempts the execution of that process which is having 5 priority number and allocates the process with priority number 2 inside the CPU. It suffers from 
starvation problem. That is the difficulty the priority scheduling algorithm always suffers from. What is starvation? Say a process is having very low priority. That means a high priority number and all the processes are having very low priority number with greater priority. So, the less priority process will never get the chance to be executed inside the CPU. While it is getting the chance by the time a new process arrives with a high priority. So, again it comes out and in this way it never gets the chance to complete its execution inside the CPU. Thus, it suffers from starvation. That is the problem a priority scheduling is having. So, aging is associated with this type of scheduling algorithm. Aging can be used to increase the priority of a process and thus it can avoid the starvation. So, if time passes and the process is not getting the chance to get inside the CPU, the operating system is assigning the aging factor with that badly suffered process. How it can be diminished we will see later on. But before that, let us see how priority scheduling is happening. So, we have seen a priority number which is definitely one integer number is associated with each and every process. The CPU is allocated to the process with the highest priority. So, we can say that smallest integer is equivalent to the highest priority. This priority scheduling algorithm can again be of two types. One is preemptive, another one is non-preemptive. Non-preemptive type of priority scheduling algorithm says that once a process gets the CPU, it will only come out, of, come out of the CPU when it completes its execution. Preemptive priority scheduling says that when a process is running, and a new process arrives with high priority that previously running process is stopped comes out of the CPU and the new process gets inside the CPU. So, SJF can be said as a special priority scheduling algorithm where priority is the predicted next CPU burst time so that it can decide the priority. Let us have one example. Say in this scenario, we are having 5 processes. Process P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. With these processes, their burst time is also given. Process P1 is having the burst time 10 millisecond. Process P2 is having the burst time just 1 millisecond. P3 is having 2 millisecond burst time. P4 is having 1 millisecond burst time and process P5 is, P5 is having 5 millisecond burst time. With their burst time, the priority number is also assigned. You can see here that P1 is having the priority 3 while P2 is having the priority 1, P3, 4, P4, 5 and P5 is having priority number 2. So, look at the priority numbers, the process which is having lower priority number is of greater importance or of higher priority. It should be executed first. So, in this particular example, the process P2 is having the priority 1, smallest priority number among all these 5 processes. So, P2 must be executed first. After that, P5 with priority number 2 then P1 with priority number 3, after that P3 priority number 4 and lastly P4 with priority number 5. If we look at the Gartt chart for this type of priority scheduling, you will see that from the 0th millisecond time period, that means from the very beginning process P2 starts its execution because P2 is having the lesser priority number with higher priority, priority number 1. So, P2 starts its execution first. Now, see what is the burst time for process P2? It takes 
just a single millisecond time period to complete its execution, one millisecond time period. So, starting from 0 millisecond after 1 millisecond P2 is over. After that, which process will start its execution? With the next priority number. That means, process P5. So, P5 starts its execution at 1 millisecond time period and it will work till 5 millisecond because its burst time is 5 millisecond. So, when it gets completed at 6 millisecond time period. So, after 6 millisecond P2 is over, P5 is over. We are having 3 processes in our hand that is P1, P3 and P4. Next process is P1 with the priority number 3. So, P1 starts its execution at 6 millisecond time period. How long it will work? Its burst time is 10 millisecond. That means it is a longer process. So, starting from 6 millisecond works uh, for 10 millisecond and completes at 16 millisecond time period. So, at 16 millisecond we are having P2, P5 and P1 over. Remaining two processes are P3 and P4. Out of these two, P3 is having priority number less priority number 4 than P4. So, P3 starts its execution at 16 millisecond. We have seen that burst time for P3 is just 2 millisecond. It will work till 18 millisecond time period. After 18 millisecond, the remaining process is P4 with just 1 millisecond burst time and at 19 millisecond time period, P4 is over. So, at 19 millisecond time period, we are having all these 5 processes over and this type of priority scheduling is non-preemptive because we have seen that when one process gets the CPU, it is coming out of the CPU once it gets over. So, finding the average waiting time that means for P2, it is just 0 millisecond time period as it is not waiting for anybody. For P5, it is 1 millisecond. For P1, it is 6 millisecond. For P3, it is 16 millisecond and for P4, it is 18 millisecond. So, 0 plus 1 plus 6 plus 16 plus 18 divided by 5, we are getting the average waiting time 8.2 millisecond. So, this is the non-preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. Here comes the next question. In this example, I am going to discuss the preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. That means, when a process is running, another process comes with higher priority and interrupts the process, taking it out of the CPU and itself it getting inside the CPU for execution. Same example, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 with their burst times 10 millisecond, 1 millisecond, 2 millisecond, 1 millisecond and 5 millisecond with the priority numbers assigned 3, 1, 4, 5, 2 respectively. Here, I have given another parameter that is the arrival time when a process is coming in the ready queue. So, P1's arrival time is 0, 0.0 millisecond. So, from the very beginning, P1 is there. P2 arrives at 1 millisecond time period, P3 arrives at 2 millisecond time period, P4 at 3 millisecond time period and P5 at 4 millisecond time period. That means, after 4 millisecond period, we are having all these 5 processes in our ready queue. Let us see how we can find the average waiting time for this preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. Now, I have worked out the example here. This is the particular example. This is the priority scheduling guard chart. So, at the very beginning, at 0.0, .0 millisecond time period, we are having just a single process in our hand that is process P1. No other processes has yet arrived. 
So, the system must start with process P1. So, at 0 millisecond time period, P1 starts its execution. P1's burst time is 10 millisecond. So, if it is a non preemptive priority scheduling, P1 will release the CPU only after 10 millisecond. But this is the reverse case, this is the preemptive priority scheduling. So, we have seen that just after 1 millisecond time period, while P1 is working, P2 arrived in the system with the priority number 1, which is lesser than P1, priority number 3. So, what is happening? P1 is coming out of the system and P2 is entering inside the CPU for execution. So, after 1 millisecond, P1 is coming out, P2 gets inside and P2's burst time is just 1 millisecond. So, it will work after that 1 millisecond and at 2 millisecond time period, P2 completes its execution with just 1 millisecond burst time. So, we can say that at 2 millisecond time period, P2 is over. So, now after 2 millisecond time period, you see that P3 arrived. So, P2 completed, we are having in our hand P1 and P3 at 2 millisecond time period. Now, the system has to decide which process will come inside the CPU, whether it is P1 or it is P3. So, P1's priority number is 3, P3's priority number is 4. Now, another thing is that when P1 comes out at 1 millisecond time period, its remaining burst time is 10 minus 1 that is 9 millisecond. 10 minus 1 is equal to 9 millisecond. So, it has to work for 9 millisecond and P3 has to work for 2 millisecond. Now, as P3's priority is greater than P1's priority, so system will allow P1 to execute again. So, when P2 comes out, P1 gets inside the CPU and starts its execution at 2 millisecond time period. See, at 3 millisecond time period, P4 arrived with burst time 1 millisecond, but the priority number is 5. So, at 3 millisecond, we have to take a decision whether we will allow P1 to execute with 9 millisecond, that means uh, 9 minus 1. Remaining burst time 8 millisecond and with priority 3, P3 with burst time 2 millisecond and priority 4 and P4 with burst time 1 millisecond and priority 5. So, Obviously, P1 with smaller priority number will get the chance. So, here P1 is starting its execution again after say 3 millisecond. Now, it will work till 4 millisecond because at 4 millisecond time period, we have seen that another process P5 arrives with the burst time 5 and the priority 2. So, at 4 millisecond, all the processes arrived and P2 is finished. That is the thing we know. Now, we are having at 4 millisecond, P1 with 2 plus 1, 3. So, 10 minus 3, 7 millisecond remaining with priority number 3, we are having P3 with 2 millisecond and priority number 4, P4 
with one millisecond. Priority number five and P five with five millisecond. And priority number two. So out of these four processes, one, two, three, four. Out of these four processes, we have seen P five is having the smallest priority number. So having greater importance. So definitely at four millisecond time period, we will allow that process which is having smallest priority number because now at four millisecond time period, all the processes. Have arrived. So, P5 gets the chance to be executed inside the CPU. P5's burst time is 5 millisecond. So, starting at 4 millisecond, it will work for 5 millisecond, and at 9 millisecond, it is over. So, at 9 millisecond, P5 is also over. So, out of these 5 processes, P2 is over at 9 millisecond, even P5 is also over. So, you see that with priority number 1 and 2, the most priority processes are now over. So, which process is the next process to start? That is the next priority number that is P1. So, see here at 9 millisecond time period, the system is allowing P1 to start its execution. So, what is the remaining time for P1 now? Because total burst time is 10 millisecond and previously it has worked for 3 milliseconds 1 here and 1 plus 1 2 here so 10 minus 3 equals to 7 millisecond burst time is remaining so starting at 9 millisecond it will work for 7 millisecond and will be completed at 16 millisecond so at 16 millisecond p1 is over this p1 is over you see here now Priority number 1 over, priority number 2 over, priority number 3 is over. So, now we are having just two processes that is P3 and P4 with the priority numbers 4 and 5. So, definitely with priority number 4, P3 starts its execution at 16 millisecond, work for the burst time that is 2 millisecond. So, 16 plus 2 at 18 millisecond time period, this P3 is over. P3 is over with priority number 4 and the remaining process is P4 with maximum priority number and minimum importance in this case priority 5 P4 starts here works for 1 millisecond. So, starting at 18 millisecond at 19 millisecond time period P4 is over. So, we can say at 19 millisecond all the processes are completed. Now, the next thing is to find out the average waiting time. So, see here the waiting time for process P1. How we are calculating the waiting time for process P1? Because P1 is not that kind of process which is starting once and it is coming out when it is completes execution. It is I mean intermittently executed. So, last when P1 starts at 9 millisecond time period and previously it has worked for 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 milliseconds. So, 9 minus 3 and when it arrives at 0 millisecond time periods. So, 9 minus 3 minus 0 that is 6 millisecond. Waiting time for P1 is thus 6 millisecond. Waiting time for P2. Now, when P2 arrives, P2 arrives at 1 millisecond time period and when it starts, it starts at 1 millisecond. So, it is not waiting for anybody, arrives at 1 millisecond, starts execution at 1 millisecond. So, whenever it is coming to the system, it starts its execution. So, the waiting time for P2 is 1 minus 1 that is 0 millisecond. Similarly, for P3, it is 16 minus 2 because it starts its execution at 16 millisecond time period and arrives at 2 millisecond. So, the waiting time is 14 millisecond. For P4, it is 18 minus 3 because at 18 millisecond time period, it starts its execution and arrives at 3 millisecond time period. So, 18 minus 3 that is 15 millisecond and for P5, so P5 arrives at 4 millisecond time period and whenever it is arise, arriving into the system, at that moment, it starts its execution. 
at 4 millisecond. So, it is also not waiting for anybody. Thus, the waiting time for P5 is also 4 minus 4 is equal to 0 millisecond time period. Therefore, the total waiting time for all these 5 processes are 6 plus 0 plus 14 plus 15 plus 0 equals to 35 millisecond time period. And we are having 5 processes. Hence, the average waiting time AWT equals to 35 by 5 is equal to 7 millisecond. So, we have seen that in case of non preemptive priority scheduling, the average waiting time is 8.2 millisecond. And for the same example, we have calculated the average waiting time is 7 millisecond for preemptive priority scheduling. So, definitely. Uh, this one is the better. Now, with priority scheduling, I told you previously, we are having the problem of starvation. Starvation means low priority processes may never execute. That means, say a process is there in your ready queue, which say priority number 15, very high priority number. So, very less important process. So, whenever it is trying to get inside the CPU, a new process is arriving with priority number less than 15. Again, when it tries, another process comes with again less priority number less than 15. So, in this way, the process is never getting the chance to get inside the CPU and it is starving. So, the solution is aging. Aging means as the time progresses, increase the priority of the process. So, if the system sees that the process is never getting the get inside the CPU, it is attaching the aging value that means it is reducing the priority number. That means making the priority of the process high gradually. In this way a time comes when the process gets high priority, lower priority number and get inside the CPU for execution. So, this was the problem and solution associated with our priority scheduling algorithm. Here completes my lecture on priority scheduling algorithm. In our next lecture, we will see that the other type of scheduling algorithm which is round robin scheduling. Thank you.